morning, everyone. Welcome to your morning mobility. My name is Adrian, and today we're going to work on a little bit of everything. Uh, of course, we're going to go live if you have any questions. Give me a check. I'm going to try to get to them. Let's get mobile. We're going to start off with a nice, easy mobility exercise. Four angels, always a popular one. We're going to pull on our tailbone, our head, and our shoulders. The roller. Our palms are going to be face up. I'm just going to slide head open, slide down. We'll leave our palms face up the whole time. We're trying to go for a gentle stretch right along the chest and shoulders. And we're going to breathe your stomach the whole time. Think slow, deep breath. A couple seconds in, a couple seconds out. Go for about 10 more seconds. It's really trying to mobilize right along our chest and shoulders and open up towards the sky. Keep those palms face up the whole time. We're almost there. And five, four, three, two, and one. Excellent. From here, actually, we're going to roll over sideways. We're going to warm up our back. We're gonna do a little bit of mobility on the back. So here, turn the floor sideways, hugging yourself as best you can, and then going up and down, right along, just waking up our back. Hello to all those postural muscles. Use the computer a lot. Trip a little up. Postural muscles in the upper and middle back. For about 10 more seconds. And time. If you want to pause and just really kind of work with the spot, that's fine. Four, three, two, one. Now that our upper body is a little bit open, we're working for our lower body. There's the foam roller, one of our quads. I think the roller is a warm up today. Sort of an active release because we're going to go through a little more stretching today. I'm kind of pushing the envelope with some of our motion. So, here, starting with just above the knees, on our elbows, and then rolling right along our quads. We're going to be here for about two minutes. We're going to take your time. Of course, if you want to stay here a little longer, you always can. Slow, deep work. Double check if there's any feedback. Roller. Okay. Barely here. Okay. Sorry, let me. Well, I just turned it right off. Well, you know, we'll just do no music today. Maybe it's just easier. Okay. Let's just keep going. All right. So we're going to, as you asked, then just cut computer sound. We'll just really focus on the stretching this morning. Okay. <laughs> so keep going with the foam roller. Slowly working back and forth. Now, if you want to change it up, you can also turn your feet in to get a little more of the outer quad. You can turn your feet out to get a little more of the inner quad. Everyone's different. Feel free to really just work into wherever you need release. If you're doing a lot of lunges or squats recently, it's always good to really work through the thighs and glutes, which we'll get to in a sec. You know, a lot of lateral lunges, it'd be good to work closer to the glute med and the outside quad. Again, everyone's different. Really work through whatever you got going on. Think slow, deep breaths. Good. About 20 seconds. I'm actually going to check if I'm even using the right microphone. 
No, it says my headset. Hopefully they're playing nice today. Okay, let's keep going. So now we're gonna warm up our glutes. So having a seat on the foam roller, we're gonna cross our legs. We have two options here. We can either cross our legs just a little bit, just ankle to ankle. If you're able to, try to cross one ankle on top of one knee and we're gonna work right into our glute. Really just working deep in there. Think slow, deep breaths. I'm sure to check the recording because the recording will let me know what the sound was like on your end. So if it was too loud, I'll have to make some adjustments on my end for future classes. So apologies for the, for the music today. And five, four, three, two, and one, switching sides. So from here, ankle on one knee, really working back and forth. So after our foam roller warm up, if you have any requests, feel free to let me know. Put them in the chat, or you can say them out loud. So to unmute yourself. So yeah, feel free to make a request. If not, we'll do a mix of hip openers, a little bit of core, a little bit of upper body, a little bit of everything, really. For 10 more seconds here, just really digging into our glute, warming that up, getting blood flow, all those important tissues. And five, four, three, two, and one. All right. So here we do a series of just groin and hip and glute openers. So we're going to start off with a small series that I like, which goes from a lunge to a hamstring to a glute. We're going to start. I'm going to start on my left side. My left leg is going to go forward. I'm going to lunge so I feel a slight stretch in the top of my thigh, front of my hip. From here, I'm gonna rotate my front leg. I rotate it open. So if it's neutral, I'm gonna rotate it open. And I tuck in my core, squeeze my bum. I'm gonna push that whole structure forward. So I'm feeling a deep stretch in my hip flexor. Think slow, deep breath the whole time. And Five, four, three, two, one. And here, leg out, shoulders back, leaning forward for a nice hamstring stretch. We're gonna do several hamstring stretches today. I want you to watch out for this foot. If you can, avoid it leaning towards the outside. Try to keep it actually neutral. Extend your tailbone backwards. Try to keep a tall posture while leaning forward. And avoid any pressure on this knee. For me, I'm resting my hands here. I'm not actually pressing or putting pressure on my joint. You can also just let your hands fall to the side. We're gonna hang out here for about 15 more seconds, really digging into this hamstring. And five, four, three, two, one. Now here, leg parallel to the edge of the mat. We're gonna go into a glute stretch or a, here's a pigeon pose in yoga. I'm no yogi, but I do like stretching. So <laughs> we're gonna go into a glute stretch. Just really dig in. Think slow, deep breath. Couple seconds in, couple seconds out. And five, four, three, two, and one. Easing off, and I'm gonna do the same three stretches on the other side. Yeah, I do take requests, so if you have anything you wanna do in particular, just let me know. So foot planted, lunging forward, whichever leg is in front, rotated open. So I'm trying to externally rotate my hip to open up in my pelvis and lean forward so I feel a stretch on my opposite my opposite hip flexor 
and top of my thigh. So we're trying to sink in there as best I can. And a couple seconds in for your breath, a couple seconds out. Four and a four or five and five are great. Or if you wanna do some box breathing, which is four seconds in, four second hold, four seconds out. And a four second hold, that's fine too. Whatever breathing technique works for you. And five, four, three, two, and one. Leg out straight, shoulders back, leading forward, going for that nice hamstring stretch. We're trying to dig in there. Avoid this foot turning towards the outside or turning towards the inside. Try to keep it neutral, think toes planted up towards the ceiling or towards your face. And deeply stretching in the hamstring. Seven seconds, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Excellent. From here, leg in, going way back. So you have a deep glute stretch. Thing you can do as well as with every exhale on your slow breathing, you're gonna sink that stretch maybe just like a smidge more. After this, we're gonna move on to some groin openers, but of course, if you have any requests, please let me know. Think slow, deep breathing. And five, four, three, two, and one. All right, let's start, off, start off with an easy butterfly stretch. So here, feet together, sink knees down, nice and tall posture, pulling in as best we can. And try to force this one while we'll plenty more ones to open up the hip. Being slow, deep breath. You want to gently rock a little bit, that's fine too. And do whatever works for you. But 15 seconds here, one five. And five, four, three, two, and one. Excellent. From here, we're actually going to go for a second groin stretch. We have two options. We can do this standing or in a deep squat. I'm going to show you standing first, and I'll go into the deep squat. So standing, feet about hip width apart, or maybe double hip width apart. Sorry, double or triple hip width apart. Then we're going to lean towards one side. On this foot to stay neutral, whichever leg is straight, that foot stays neutral. You're going to lean towards the other side into a deep side lunge. I'm going to feel a nice stretch on the inner, inner hamstring and then groin. If you want to deepen it, you can also go onto your heel and sink in a little more. That's really going to open up deep into the hamstring and inner thigh. If you want, you can also go into a deep lunge like this. And same thing, turn that heel towards the sky, turn those toes towards the sky. And then from here, try to externally rotate Whereas when you were standing, you can actually turn your whole body in this one. Try to open up your hips as much as you can. Push this knee towards the outside and really anchor that heel into the ground to open up in your groin and hamstring. You're gonna feel almost like on the, just the, the inner half of the back of your leg, if that makes any sense. We're really just gonna let that sink in. For me, I prefer the deeper one like this. I feel like I get a deeper stretch, but everyone's different. This isn't necessarily better or worse, standing or in a deep squat, either one is fine. Five seconds here, five, four, three, two, and one, slowly coming up. If you're gonna switch sides, I'm gonna go right into the deep one. That one works better for me, but standing or deep squat is 
fine either way. Either one's better, you just gotta find which one's better for you. So for me, my heel is dug in, my toes are pointed towards the sky, my other side is opening up as much as they can, so my right heel is dug into the ground, my left knee and left hip are trying to turn away as much as possible, and I'm using my supporting arm to assist, actually. And I'm feeling the stretch from behind the knee, right up into my groin, uh, for, uh, kind, of, uh, kind of on the inner half of my hamstring and my groin. But everyone's different. Feel free to move around until you feel a good stretch. There is no, there's no right way. So whatever feels right for you. And five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly easing off. Ooh, all right. From here, we're gonna go for a little bit of lat, a little bit of uh, back. So hands are stretched, easy child's pose. Sitting back, this is just to get her back warmed up. About 10 seconds here, then we're gonna go into what's called a cobra. We're gonna do just a couple of those. So get her back mobilized before we go into some more twisting knee or twisty poses. And five, four, three, two, one. Then go into a plank position on the ground. Then from here, squeeze back your shoulders, peel off the ground. You're gonna push your hips into the ground, press into your palms, think chin to sky or chin to neutral. So a gentle stretch across your abdominal. About 10 seconds here. Then we're gonna go back to child's in the back to here just one more time. And three, two, one. Then back to child's pose. Hands are stretched, sitting back, going for that nice deep back stretch. Just trying to open up as best we can. Of course, if any requests, like if you want more rolling or more myofascial, that's fine. Just let me know. Three, two, one. Back to that plank position and then peeling off the ground. Gonna open up through abdominals. And five, four, three, two, and one. Excellent. Here we go back to the seated position. We're gonna open up a little bit of QL, a little bit of lat stretch. So here, uh, I'm gonna go into a half lotus. If you can't do that, that's okay. Uh, sit cross-legged as best as you can. So if you're sitting cross-legged, it's whichever leg is closest. If you're sitting in half lotus, like I will be, uh, it's whichever leg is on the bottom. So for me, my left leg is on the bottom, my right leg is on top. And so for me, because my left leg is on the bottom, it's anchored down, I'm gonna use my top leg or my top ankle to press into the floor, anchor my left hip into the ground while my left arm reaches up first and then away. I'm gonna use my other arm for support. So from here, I'm gonna reach away. I'm gonna purposely anchor this left leg down, anchor that hip down, and then reach up and away. And my goal is to feel like I'm trying to separate my rib from my hip. So even as, even as I lean my body weight shifts, I can actually use my, my, my top leg to press that knee right back into the ground. I'm trying to actively work in both directions. I'm actively pushing my leg into the ground, actively reaching as far away as I can. I'm trying to basically pull them both away from each other. Five seconds here, five, four, three, two, one, easing off, now switching sides. I'm going in and half lotus, you don't have to. You do whatever works for you. If you can go into full lotus, uh, I can't, but <laughs> that's fine too. Just whichever leg is closer at that point. So here, arm road stretched. Nice and tall, leaning away as best we can. We're trying to actively push our right hip into the ground, really anchor it in like you're trying to like lock your sit bones into the ground and reach up first and then away. We're trying to actively push our rib away from our hip. Avoid just passively leaning, really try to actually reach like you're trying to reach for something that's just out of, just out of reach. <laughs> really trying to move over. 
about seven seconds. Here's seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Excellent. From here, we're to lie face up. We're going to go for a glute meat stretch and a little bit of a low back twist. If your low back is having a bit of a rough time this morning, don't try to force it. I want you to just take it easy as best you can. So for me, my right leg is up. My left arm is going to grab my right leg. I'm going to pull that over, going for that deep glute stretch. We still have quite a bit of time. We have about 15, 20 minutes left. So if you have any requests, feel free to make them. I'll be more than happy to get to them. If not, we'll just keep mobilizing through our hip, groin, hamstrings, all that fun stuff. Before I make requests, now is the time. So 10 more seconds here, and we'll switch sides. 10. Five, four, three, two, and one. Switching sides. Slow, deep breaths. And five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly easing off. Whew. All right. Coming up, we're just going to check if there's any requests. I'll try to make a slow recovery. Nothing yet. All right. Well, we me do a little bit of rolling. I feel like some people want that. We're going to go for our feet. Always a popular one. So grab your lacrosse ball, hockey ball, tennis ball, whatever you got. I'll be using a, uh, a hockey ball, they're quite firm. We're gonna place it under our big toe. I want you to press as best you can. I can't press this ball very much, but that's okay. And we roll right along the arch of my feet. If you enjoy walking as much as I do, I actually walk every day, both for work and for fun. It's good to you know, keep these muscles nice and Nice and flexible. You don't want stiff feet. So it's working right along the arch. I'm going to show you from the front here. For me, I'm actually angling my toe down, my pinky toe up. It's going to work right along, right along the arch here. Actually, after the feet, we'll do some, some glute meat work. So I'll be taking a laptop down on the floor. All right, in three, two, one. Now we're going to move to the center. So right along. So you want to start between the balls of the feet. And you're going to work right along the center, right up to your kind of the nook of your heel, and right back to between the balls of your feet. I'll show you from the front. So here, working right along that whole center of your foot. You want to go nice and slow. If you want to just press and hold it on a particular spot, that's fine too. Think slow, deep breath. And five, four, three, two, and one. Excellent. From here, from the balls of our feet, going forward and then right along. Sorry, wrist on the outside. So underneath the big toe, right along the arch. If you want to even angle your foot, for me, I turn, I turn my big toe down, my pinky toe up, and I work right along the arch. Of course, you want to press and hold it in a particular spot. That's fine too. Uh, if you're using a hard ball, like a golf ball, um, a lacrosse ball, or a uh, hockey ball, be, be careful not to press too much. Again, you don't want to bruise the bottom of your feet. You want to press firmly, but not so hard that uh, you're in extreme pain. The goal is release, not pain. And three, two, one. Now the center of our foot. And work right along to our heel right between the balls of our feet. So we work in that whole range 
back and forth, about 35 seconds here. And after this, we'll do a little bit of glute mead, so then we're clockwork one. We'll try to upper back. You know, just do, we'll do kind of the crowd favorite <laughs> from when this class used to be in person. All right, and three, two, and one. Ooh, easing off. All right, I'm gonna bring it down to the floor. You grab some water, take a sip of your coffee. Definitely feel free to. Just gonna do a little bit of camera adjusting here. Take this right down on the floor because you'll need to be with me on this one. That looks good. Okay. So here we're actually gonna be lying on our side. So you're laying on our side. We're going to do an anchor point first. So we're going to lie face up. We're going to find our hip bone. If you're not sure where your hip bone is, I want you to take your hands, find your belly button, then go to the sides and a little bit down. You should feel kind of two, two curvy bends in your bones. Once you've found those, I want you to walk maybe, go towards your bum, maybe two, three inches. And you're going to feel a soft, squishy part in the side of your bum. I want you to place the ball right there. So again, on the side, so hopefully you can see that. So not at her hip bone, not just below it, but kind of down and off to the side, kind of the side of her bum. And from here, we're gonna actually lay on top of it on her side, directly like this. So we're going for a glute med here. Uh, again, if you're unsure, uh, if, you're, if you're unsure about the placement in general, just go with feeling. Uh, you'll generally know it when you find it. Um, you want to feel like in kind of like the side of your bum. If you're worried about the specific placement, as long as it's pressing into muscle, as long as it feels squishy, where you're pressing it into, that's fine. You want to feel it kind of on the side of your bum, not into your bones, and not into any, any hip joint. I'm just going to hang out here with our legs straight. Uh, if this is too much, you can relieve yourself by just kind of bending a leg and easing off, either in front or behind, just to reduce the pressure. But and also stack and really put all that weight right into your hip. So about five seconds here, and then we're going to move up a little bit. And four, three, two, one. And from here, we're actually going to go about 45 degrees. After 45, we'll head straight to 90. Just going to do three different ones today. And for me, uh, I keep my feet mostly neutral. I maybe wiggle them around a little bit. So if you're going to find out if that makes a difference for you. If you have a particularly tight IT band, uh, it may make a difference to keep your legs straight versus toes towards, uh, to toes towards your face. Everyone's different. So we we'll to experiment and find out what works for you. About 45 degrees here. When I say 45, I mean, if I was flat, that'd be zero. And it'd be going up to a 45 degree angle. About 10 more seconds, and we're going to go up to 90, which is just an L shape. And three, two. One, then bring your legs all the way up. Uh, if you can't go all the way up with your legs, it's fine. You can bend your knees like you're sitting in a chair. So you're making kind of two L shapes. Back to back, it's fine too. But for me, I'm gonna keep my legs out. If you're to experiment, I know it works for you. If you need to bend your legs, that's fine. We should be feeling this on the side of our bum and our glute need. And for some people, it gets worse as they go higher. For some people, it gets easier. Everyone's different. There's no right way. Just make sure you're feeling a good release. That's all that matters. In 10 seconds, 10, 9, 8, 7, and 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Easing off, and now we're going to do the other side. So for me, I'm going to spin around, but you don't have to. You can do whatever angle works for you. And once more, if we have about 10 minutes left, then we request now is the time to make them. So here, finding your anchor point, so finding your hip bone. Once you find your hip bone, go and be three inches down towards the glutes. Dig it in there and lay on your side.
So 10 seconds here, then we're gonna move up 45 degrees. And three, two, one. Now about 45 degrees moving up. And the goal is to keep digging into your glute knee the whole time. If you find you've lost it, feel free to readjust your hips up or down or back to front as necessary so you feel a deep push into your glute knees. And again, I really stress on pushing into the glute meter into the muscle. Don't press it into your bone. The goal isn't to feel pain. The goal is to feel a release or like it's pressing into a knot or just a deep part of your tissue, but ideally not into any joint. And seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Perfect. From here, coming up, feet stacked 90 degrees. If this is too much, you can bend your knees to making two L shapes, just 90 degrees at the knees and 90 degrees at the hip. But if you can, try to make an L shape with your whole body and stick your feet out as best you can. So 15 seconds here, we're almost there. Five, four, three, two, and one. Perfect. Coming up. From here, we're gonna use the ball on our back. We can do this either lying face up or we can do it against the wall. So either one's fine. So I'm gonna do it lying, sorry, lying face up. I'm gonna place the ball just between my spine and my shoulder blade. So right about there, be a little higher. My goal is to really dig in between my spine and my shoulder blade. After this, we'll do the upper trap and then we'll call it. So here, really digging into the, between my spine and my shoulder blade. If you know your anatomy, we're going for our rhomboids. Uh, of which we have two on each side. So really slowly working up and down, or if you wanna press and hold it on a particular spot, that's fine too. For me, I'm gonna press and hold. I find that I tighten up in specific spots in my upper back, but everyone's different. So feel free to work into whatever, whatever feels great or whatever feels terrible, uh, but feels like a good release. And so I'm gonna press and hold. We'll be here for about 40 more seconds, just slowly digging in. And of course, if you need last minute requests, Feel free to make them. If not, we'll go into rhomboids, then into the upper traps, and we'll call it there. Just slowly digging in. About seven seconds, seven, six, five, four, Three, two, and one, easing off and switching sides. So crossing your arms, hugging yourselves as best we can. And for me, I'm gonna hold it in a particular spot, but if you wanna go up and down, you can shimmy up and down. You can also use a wall and really press into that. About 15 more seconds here, pressing into whatever you need to press into to feel a good release. If you feel a sharp pain, don't press into there. Again, our goal isn't to experience as much pain as possible. <laughs> and five, four, Three, two, one, and last two for today. 
We're gonna go for the upper trap. We're gonna take the ball, we're gonna place it just underneath or just behind her collarbone or just underneath her upper trap muscle. So from here, if you're not sure where that is, find your collarbone first, then grab a chunk of side neck or upper muscle, kind of almost like your shrugging muscle. If you were to shrug the muscle that bunches up, that's the muscle we're going for, kind of our shrugging muscle. And from here, once it's underneath that muscle, we're gonna slowly take that same arm and glide up and down or side to side. You can make gentle circles. You can make crescents, half moons. You can flow in whatever works for you. You can draw spirals and gradually working towards the center, spiral in or spiral out. Doesn't really matter, whatever works for you. Being nice. And so flowing. Try to just open up the upper trap and upper neck. And if you want to just kind of let it hang somewhere, like hang to the side or hang here, that's fine. Just never force it down towards the ground. Let gravity do its thing and slowly let it release. We're almost there. About 15 seconds on this side, then we'll switch sides. And five, four, three, two, and one, easing off. And other side, think shoulders low behind that upper trap. And notice if one side's a lot worse than the other. If you tend to carry your groceries or if you have a bag or a purse or if you have a messenger bag, uh, if you carry that on one side, it's good to notice if one side is a lot worse than the other. I'm a big advocate of backpacks. It's my pro tip for today <laughs> is backpacks with an even distribution of weight. And while they may not be the most stylish, it is good for your posture to have it spread out evenly. Think slow, deep work, working up and down. Or drawing crescents or circles, whatever works for you. Maybe you're for about 20 more seconds. Just gently working through any kind of tension in that upper trap. Ten seconds, ten, nine, and three, two, and one. All right, well, no too many requests, so we are going to call it here. I want to thank you all for attending and thank you all who watch this later live on YouTube. It does help. I really appreciate it. Hope you all have a wonderful day. I'm going to end the recording here. Thank you so much for attending.